Welkom bij het ABFF TV. Het is een programma van het Amsterdams Buurtfilmfestival dat wordt ieder jaar georganiseerd. Mijn naam is Kibret Mokonen, initiatiefnemer en artistiek leider van dit mooie filmfestival. En vandaag zit ik hier met filmmaker Tuns. Een filmmaker uit Amsterdam. Uh, ik snap dat je geen Nederlands uh, zo goed spreekt of doe je het wel best? Ik uh, probeer. Jij probeert het. Probeer, ja. klein beetje, ja. maar ik kan niet spreken. Niet zo ver. Well. Dus wij doen, het, wij doen het gewoon lekker in het Engels. Yes, please. Ja? Yeah? Thank Can you I very much. Can I get you like tea? Because this is like a very beautiful mixture of all kind of teas in it. Oh, a bit Turkish tea also? Yeah, a little bit Turkish Fantastic. tea, Ethiopian tea. Fantastic. And uh, I hope you like it. Hey, Tuns, before you start telling us about yourself, Where did you come from uh, today? Today I come from my house. Where is it? I live in Oost, Amsterdam Oost. In Amsterdam Oost? Yeah. In Amsterdam East. <laughs> yeah, East. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. in front of Tropen Museum. Okay. Amazing neighborhood. And I lived there for a long time actually. Even though I don't speak Dutch, yeah. I live here for a long time. Amsterdam. Uh, just my whole surrounding was uh, all, always, I don't know why, I had Dutch friends, but it was always foreigners. I did Rietveld Academy. Yeah. Uh -huh. I uh, graduated on 2007. Okay, okay. Then I went into advertisement world yeah. and I worked with American companies and okay, stuff. Okay. A lot with Turkey. Yeah. And yeah. The, the language stayed here. Because you are originally from Turkey. Yeah. Turkey. How do you say it nowadays? Turkey is called Turkey. Turkey. It's because Turkey means this uh, that, bird. Uh, that bird, yeah. And that bird, we don't like too much. Yes. <laughs> it's not a beautiful bird. So it's called now officially yeah. Turkey. Turkey. When I talked to you, I was like watching these tattoos and those beautiful letters on your, in your hand, oh, yeah. on your hand, on your feet. Oh, yeah. What are these? Yeah. Tell us more about this. It's beautiful. It's actually, it says Istanbul. Istanbul, yeah. All together. Yeah. But uh, when you divide, they mean something, each icon. It's like... Number one, dollar sign, Bitcoin sign, yeah. number seven, and stuff. So beautiful. Such a beautiful. Story is, I'm from Istanbul, and it says Istanbul. Yeah. And yeah, but then this is Istanbul, and each sign has its own definition. They belong to me, let's say, the, ah, great. the icons. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. How was your childhood lifestyle in Turkey? What can I say about my family? Yeah, yeah, more about They're from Turkey. It's yeah. a, I'm a single child. It's, my father's pilot in Turkish Airlines. Uh -huh. He used to be, now he's retired. Yeah. My mother's housewife and all my life was on the street and connected to people. Connected people. And that's something you brought to Amsterdam, can I say? I guess so. I, I did, as I said, I did Rietveld Academy yes. and I had a lot of projects with people on the street with one project with junkies. Yeah. I did typeface with them. All typefaces were like shaking yeah. and we made a newspaper with it. So I was I, a lot on the street. I, I hope I brought in. And I've used that connection with street on my work a lot as an artist. Yeah, great. And how's your contact with people living around your neighborhood? Since I have a kid, I'm more connected to mm my street and my neighbors because other people's kids they sometimes meet in front of the door they play so i get to know people but what i understand from what is neighborhood is not a neighborhood in amsterdam in turkey neighborhood is something else you know yeah, yeah. all of a sudden your door knocks and a plate of food comes because she has spare and she brings it to you and you bring that plate full the day after to them, and it go on goes like this, so it's all different rules. It was such a beautiful feeling, right? Yeah, but still here in Oost, it's a bit more multicultural, yeah, let's say. Yeah. A lot of uh, a huge mix on the street. So you live in Amsterdam East, I live there too. And the beauty of Amsterdam East is, in fact, the diversity of the society. But how do you feel about 
the other part of Amsterdam. I lived in North also uh -huh. for a long time, and <coughs> I also lived on Albert Kuypstraat on Pipe. I was most of them on markets. I love that feeling, you know. And I know more than my neighbors, the salesmen on market, like the cheese seller, puffer cheese guy, and the all vendors are my friends, kind of. I know more than my neighbors, what they do, how, where they come from. Uh, uh, which part of Amsterdam is for you, like, this is typical Amsterdam? Typical Amsterdam. Or the beauty of Amsterdam? Parks, I would say. I have to relate it to my country, you know, to Turkey, which we don't have parks. So this is here, like that park, we're going to a park and when weather is nice, that's kind of Amsterdam for me. So do you walk around in the park in Amsterdam? Oh, yeah, I'm I, a lot yeah. of walking around. Dog or something? But mostly with my son. How oh, is his son? Actually. That young boy. Young boy, we, he was also in the... He was also... And we worked on that two films that I sent you yeah. festival together with yeah. my son. In fact, the reason why I invited you here is to talk about your films and of course about this young boy of yours. You submitted us like two very beautiful film. One is uh, called uh, Morovaik Originals. Yes. And the other one is Mokum Farhal. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about those films? They are both, first of all, sponsored by, I, I don't know if it's the right word, Framer Frame Gallery, uh -huh. Amsterdam Ost. Yes. So I have a good relation with them. They love my work and I love their attitude, the, how they stand, you know, in this art scene. And the first one is uh, was in Molenwijk. It's a weird neighborhood with yeah. tall buildings. Yeah. And Framer Framed has a little room there which artists can go, work, stay, eat. It has a kitchen, shower even. You can live there and connect to the neighborhood and make a piece of artwork. So uh, they gave me that space for a month, I think. And I created that film. There, and I turned that space to a cinema and it was written on the bioscope on it. Yeah, it's so like a neighborhood uh, film house. Yeah. Built bioscope. And my idea was to open the cinema to get yeah. the attention. Yeah. Then I opened the cinema, I got the attention. Yeah. So people came and I did interviews with them. I followed them and yeah. I made films about them and bring in this such, fiction such, world. Such, such a brilliant work. Uh, that, that film is like half an hour. Maybe it's uh, now for this show too long to show. But we have uh, a teaser of your film. Yeah. Let's see that teaser of your film. Here we go. Hello. Hey. It's going to be a great experience. If they're OK, I want to send them to space. So that was beautiful teaser. Thank and you. next week uh, in our show, we present the whole film. That whole will film. be like a half an hour show. But for now, we continue with our conversation uh, because you have also one other beautiful film you made, uh, which is called uh, Mokum Farhalen. What does it mean? Amsterdam Stories. To be honest, I wanted to continue yeah. with it. Yeah. To get the story, untold stories of Amsterdam, in a way. To continue with it, but it stayed in one film. Yeah. And it was in COVID 
lockdown period and weather was great. Everybody was on parks with one and a half meter distance. And I met this Turkish crew in the park. Yeah. Gang. They were barbecuing. I became friends with them. I think you got to tell us all the story ah. of that way film because it's also good to see the film first ah, and sorry. we come back okay. with this uh, beautiful story of yours. Okay. Let's see the film. This is aflevering 1 van Mokum Verhalen. Verhalen door Amsterdammers. This is Mehmet. Ik ben in 1989 naar Nederland gekomen. We wonen in Amsterdam Oost, samen met mijn broer en mijn moeder. Zijn vader was al hier. Hij was een van de eerste gastarbeiders die hier kwam werken. Toen men met 17 was, kreeg hij een baan op Schiphol. Zijn familie was trots. Hij werkte voor de KLM. Toen werd het 11 september. De toren stortte in. Die vliegtuigen vlogen de gebouwen in. Mensen dood. Mehmet was bang. Vanaf die dag werd alle moslims tot terrorist verklaard. Ze werden ontslagen. Ik was ineens mijn baan kwijt. Ik wist niet meer wat, wat ik moest doen. Ik zat altijd in Gonjallar. We dronken thee. We speelden Rubikup. En veel oude hoeren natuurlijk. Op een dag komt Hakanabe binnen. En die zegt dat ze vrouwen met hoofddoekjes aanvallen. Ze vallen vrouwen met hoofddoeken aan. Kijk, een vrouw met een snor. Boos, boos, boos. boos waren ze? Je gaat toch geen vrouwen aanvallen? Ze wilden wraak en besloten een kerk in de fik te steken. Ze zijn naar de pomp gelopen, haalden benzine en hebben flesjes Heineken gevuld met die benzine. Nadat ze de flesjes hadden leeggedronken natuurlijk. Toen hadden we acht Molotov cocktails. S'nachts zijn we naar de hoofdkerk gegaan lopen. We smeten de Molotov. Overal vuur. Dat was wel schrikken, dus ze zijn hem snel gepeerd. Twee dagen later pakte de politie de eerste. De volgende dag de tweede. Uiteindelijk ook mij. Ik was 17, ik was de oudste. Jong, ze verklaarde hem tot de leider. Hij werd verhoord. Ze vroeg of hij Bin Laden kende. Ik was doodsbang. Uiteindelijk hebben ze mij drie maanden opgesloten. Ja. Mehmet heeft geen fascistische gedachten meer. Had hij al nooit, hij was gewoon boos eigenlijk. Zwart christen of moslim, wit of zwart, zoals je ziet, zijn we allemaal hetzelfde, toch? Toen ze die molotovs gooiden, waren er priesters in de kerk. En die kerk stond blauw van de rook. Mehmets vrienden gingen vergeving vragen. Sorry man. De priesters gaven dat op één voorwaarde. Dat ze de kerk zouden bewaken. En dat hebben ze gedaan. En trouwens, daarna is die kerk nooit meer in de fik gevlogen, grap. <laughs> Sorry, maar ik, 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 ik ging... Mogen verhalen. Enjoy the differences. Rond in Amsterdam Oost. Ja. <laughs> That's such a beautiful film. Thank you. Tell us more about this film. What is your inspiration that motivated you to make this beautiful film? Inspiration came from the story, of mm. course. And story I found uh, during one of those COVID lockdowns in Oster Park. I was hanging with my son and there was a Turkish gang. They were doing barbecue. And I met them and I became friends. The day after again we met, we did barbecue together and we continued meeting in the park. So I was in there. We didn't have this one and a half meter anymore. I was mm. in their bubble. Yeah. And like naturally you tell stories about your life yeah. and stuff. And they told me this church burning story. And I was like in shock, you know, they, they were kids and they burned the church all together, Molotov cocktails and stuff. It's a wild story. One of them was in jail. I told it to my mm. wife first, yeah. and my son was there also, he's in shock, he's listening to this. And I said, uh, I also illustrate. Next to filmmaking, I love illustrations. I started to draw their story, in a way, like a comic strip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you do- You're drawing yourself? Yeah. Okay. And when you do that, you lighten up things, lighten down things, yeah. let's say. I don't know the correct words. And I have a very professional 
you know, top-notch cartoonist friend in Turkey. He does this uh, sliding on the drawing type of films for Instagram. He has an account and he does these quick things. But he doesn't color and it's not like film format. He does more quick. Then I said, well, why not I use this technique for to tell the story? Then it worked amazingly. I, I felt it will work. Then I asked the guy who burned the church for his sound. Can I take your record your sound? And I uh, invited him to my house. So technically, you don't invite a person who you met in a park in your house. It doesn't happen. So he, it, 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 we became friends with uh, Bobby, his name. You see him at the end of the film, his face a bit now. Laughing. Yeah. 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 And then we, I recorded his sound. Then I have a Dutch uh, sound designer friend. He did this middle voices. They do commercial voiceovers and stuff. They're really professional. They have a studio. So they made this sound design under it. And I mixed this drawings, camera rolling on them and sound together. It was an amazing piece of beautiful, work. Beautiful. Both works are like beautiful. In fact, you won the prize of ABFF. Thank uh, you very much. I didn't uh, expect that. Creative seriously. films, I would say. How was the feeling for you, and especially for your son then? My son was super happy, and he was uh, collecting, saving money to buy a Nintendo Switch. So with the prize, he was like, oh, sh it happened. We got the money. <laughs> I got the money. Uh, we didn't expect that, you know. We didn't come there to get a prize or something. So, but he was asking, is there a prize? Do you think we will win and stuff? I was like, well, the prize is not important. Mo most important is to join and stuff, yeah. like cl classic words. And it's my first prize, to be honest, in my life. Ah, cool. Thank you very much. That's great, you. that's great. And, but this film was shown also in the Amsterdam Museum before ABF? No, the Mokum Verhalen. Oh, the uh, Mokum Verhalen. It actually, sorry, uh, it was done for Amsterdam Museum yeah. Corona in the Stadt exhibition. Uh, Framer Frame uh, supported me to do that and we joined there together under the name of Framer Frame. For sure you are very much happy with the result of both your films because you made it very great. But uh, did you get any reaction from the people living around you? The people in the neighborhood? People in the neighborhood? Yeah. I don't think my neighborhood saw it. Ah, Maybe someone in the exhibition saw it, but uh, the Turkish gang loved it, of course. The more important, I think, on I shared it on Twitter. It turned to be viral. Turks are burning church, of course, and I have a kind of huge Turkish community on my Twitter. It got a huge attention, like like hundred thousands of people watched the story. Yes. I went to this print house here in Amsterdam East to uh, print some, some flyers and uh, they saw your name and your face. They said, oh, we know this guy. Oh. You know, so you are very much popular within the, the Turks community in, uh, probably, in Amsterdam. Probably, probably. Before that, I, my style was like I had dreadlocks. I was yeah. a bit more show so people were remembering me because of my shape. Yeah. Now I'm more no, normal like yeah. this. Okay. Before we conclude our conversation, let's talk a little bit about uh, future planning. Is there any film work in process? You know, seriously, I was thinking just when I was coming here, I have to, I think, mix those two film ideas. Like one was documentary, one was cartoon documentary for me. Uh, even though you gave me the prize for the fiction part, I think. To mix these and to do something again with the community, mix yeah. illustration and documentary, film and these drawings maybe together. Yeah. This type of project, I need to apply for funding and do it. And I want to help you next year for Amsterdam Beard Festival. Wow. If you accept. That's very much welcome and thank you. I don't yeah. know what you call, but seriously, I'm, I said, I thought, again, on the bike, I was thinking yeah. I sh should help. That's great. Because I love what you yeah, did until now. That's great. That's uh, very much uh, happy. We are very much happy. Hey, Tunes, we can talk more about your films and yourself in Amsterdam, but we have this half an hour TV show. 
So maybe we have to end it up here, our conversation, unless you have any points to raise. Not really. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you for being here. En voor mensen thuis, bedankt voor het kijken voor het ABFF TV. Mijn naam is Kibrat Mokonen en graag tot de volgende keer.